what's going on Pokechamps, this is your boy Infamous Trainer, and the Pokemon Journeys anime is getting quite interesting. As we're about to kick off into the Project Mew arc and be introduced to different characters, I thought it'd be fun to start diving into the potential Isle of Armor and Crown Tundra arcs, as these are something I'm anticipating and am actually really excited about. Now of course, not too long ago, I did a video with Nao Kelly, Crasher, and Trainman1, and we talked about the different arcs that we could potentially see in the upcoming future. I'm pretty positive we'll see these at some point or another, but I thought it'd be fun to dive deeper into the Isle of Armor and the Crown Tundra and how it could actually affect Ash and Go and the future of Pokemon Journeys. Now this is a big task for one person, so I'm going to be bringing in some help. Greetings trainers, Scrublitz here, and it's always a pleasure to help you out, Infamous. That being said, Pokechamps, let's dive in. In regards to the narrative, we are going to discuss the theories that we expect and the realism that we hope for for each arc of the Pokemon Journeys anime. And when it comes to the protagonists, I'm going to address more in regards of the ghost stuff and infamous about the Ash stuff. As we do know, the DLC arcs have a bunch of content for everyone to explore in the Journeys anime. However, time is short, we don't know how many episodes each arc will have and there are a lot of elements to just incorporate in one go. And speaking of Go, he will have the more focus in this arc, because it's about exploration, so Go would have more focus here, and Ash would have of course more focus in the Isle of Armor, although one would not discredit the other's adventure, but there is something in regards to the character of Koharu that needs to be addressed in my opinion. As much as I love her character, her presence in the DLC arcs, it's not actually needed. It would be great, to have Koharu interact with Peonia, because they are both students and their fathers are both researchers, but her presence in the arc it's not needed, so save her for when she truly matters. And in regards of saving stuff for when they truly matter, I want to address the Moan arc because of the Ultra Beyond and the Ultra Beast that are connected to the Max Slayer of the Crown Tundra. I really want for Lily, Gladion and Lusamine to return, but they need to be saved for a proper time, because if you agglomerate the Moan family and the Sun and Moon Aftermath with Journeys and the DLC arcs, we are going to have a lot of stuff to cover. It's going to be like a blob, we will not have any room to breathe. And not to mention that if Ash goes to the Crown Tundra it save, and saves the day, it makes the entire journey of the Aether family pointless, but if they call Ash for the problem to be solved, only for Ash to solve another catastrophe, it means that the resolution for the Moan arc was solved off screen. There is no win-win situation in this scenario. Save the Moan arc for another time. And speaking of stuff for another time, Brandon, as much as I love the character of Brandon, he has no point of being in the arc for the new Regis. It would be great. Yes, but his character, again, it's not truly needed, but it would be a very welcome addition if we have, you know, Rose battling Peony to get control of the Regis and a new power source, maybe we'll see even Oliana. We don't know in regards to that. But having a lot of legendaries here, it's great for Project Mew stuff. Heck, Sonia chasing the Swords of Justice, it could lead for a Project Mew um, expedition because of the footprints. Go might get Terrakian, Ash might get Cobalion, and Chloe or Koharu might get Verizian. In getting in regards of having an emotional bond, not actually capturing the Pokemon, well, at least to Go. And speaking of Go, if he's to capture a legendary Pokemon, it should be Galarian Zapdos. He battled, reboot battled the Cantonian one, and Zapdos runs and kicks really hard and really fast, so just do a Dyna Tree Hill trial mission for the Project Mew. Now there is a lot of things that fans want from Journeys to introduce when it comes to the Crown Tundra, as it was the best part of the Pokemon DLC that had just an amazing amount of exploration, brand new characters, and new game modes. Now one thing that I would really want to see is a potential battle between Ash and Peony as he is the previous Galar champion, and he's an overall strong trainer. It'd be a great way to kind of gauge where Ash is at this point in Pokemon Journeys. Additionally, I feel like it's a great way for Ash to get some training in in a different environment and also get some advice from a previous champion. You know, even though Ash is a champion, but we won't talk about that here. They could also use the Dynamax Adventures as a way to also train Ash, as he's not very proficient when it comes to Dynamaxing, and it'd be a great way to introduce a new legendary in the Crown Tundra for also 
for Go to possibly catch. And as for Go, I just want him to catch some unique Pokemon and create some bonds with the Pokemon that he already has with him. This is a great opportunity to show more of Go's growth. The Crown Tundra DLC is pretty much the representation of Go, of exploration and catching new Pokemon. It would be a missed opportunity if they just use the entire Crown Tundra arc as something to just introduce a legendary for one episode and then never come back. There's a lot more you can do with this. Let's not forget, like Curl Blitz said, Brandon is another factor. He is a person who loves the Regis, so that's a great way to tie in two more legendary Pokemon that Ash and Go can also meet as well, because Reggie Drago and Reggie Alecki are two very unique Pokemon. And then when it comes to Calyrex, I believe there's two ways they can do this. They can either give us a small arc, which they would most likely do because it's the Pokemon anime, and introduce either Glastrier or Spectrier with Calyrex. But what I'm hoping for is something similar to the Pokemon Black and White movie, where we got one movie with Reshiram and one movie with Zekrom. Then you can do the same exact thing and introduce both horses without leaving any of them out. And just in case, I'll also mention the Glarian Star Tournament, but I feel like any implication of that tournament will not be in the Pokemon Journeys anime until after the World Championship has happened. As my potential hope would be that after Ash wins the World Championship, Leon steps down and becomes the Galar Champion instead. But let's not forget about the Isle of Armor. In regards to the Isle of Armor, many of you must be asking right now, what would Go realistically do or try to do in a place where it's more dojo focused, right? So here's the thing, when Ash would do all of his training in the towers and the dojo and whatnot, I do believe that Go would have some Project Mew trial missions on the go, like he would continue to go to the Isle of Armor, capture mo more Pokemon, and while Ash is training with Mustard, I do believe that Go would be the one to get the honey from the Dynamax Vespi Queen in that tree. Maybe we can see, for example, the Gigantamax Cinderace for the first time. It would be a great way for the character of Honey to give a trial mission for Go and for Go to try to handle on his own without the assistance of Ash. And speaking of the character of Honey, that one being Mustard's wife, I do want for her to be the one to introduce Gigantamax Venusaur, if Gary is the one to introduce Gigantamax Blastoise in the future. Maybe seeing Go's bravery to get the Honey and also the tactical approach, it would be a great way for Cub Fu to get an interest in Go, because I will say this much, even though that I love Cub Fu, I don't see in any realistic scenario Ash and Go getting both that Pokemon, because Tsurugi has the single strike style, Asahi might have the rapid strike style, so I really want for Go to get Cub Fu, to Gigantamax into a purple color, Urshifu being called Mix Strike style, and maybe this is a Cub Fu that evolves outside of the Isle of Armor, maybe in Sinnoh, that's the rumored, theorized native region of Cub Fu. Just give Ghost Cub Fu the Dusk like in Rock treatment. If he gets a Toxtricity, do the same as well. But yeah, the character of Go in the Isle of Armor, it would be great if we have the character of Hop here as well, as an introduction or reintroduction, it would be great because Hop is endgame, is to be a research assistant for Professor Sonia, so Go knowing Sonia, he might plant the seeds of researching into Hop's mind. And speaking of mind, we do have the Esper Avery, that's your rival in Pokemon Shield. And since Go allied with Zamazenta and, and Avery has Psychic Pokemon, it would be a great way for Go to learn more about Psychic Pokemon since his end goal is to capture Mew of all Pokemon. Maybe Avery can be a rival to Go? Maybe the Isle of Armor can be a summer camp arc? Like the ones that we had in Diamond and Pearl and X and Y? Only time will tell, ladies and gentlemen. And speaking of X and Y, we do see Xerneas in that summer camp. So I really want for us in the Isle of Armor to see Galarian Moltres, since Go, when he met Gary, saw the Cantonian one, and that's a great foreshadowing for the Crown Tundra arc that might happen after the Isle of Armor one, and coincides with the place where Galarian Moltres is in the games. But yeah, in the end of the day, these are just crafted scenarios that might or might not happen, and I'm sure that Infamous has some great ones to share with you all. 
Now, the Isle of Armor for me is the biggest opportunity for journeys to step up into a brand new light, especially for Ash, who's felt like a secondary character the entire show thus far. Now, fans have hoped that this will be the final training spot for Ash before the final top eight, as I also believe this is going to be the best training location for Ash to develop his skills, get better in Dynamaxing, and overall encounter a brand new trainer that can take him to the top. Of course, that being Mustard, who has years of experience, and of course, he trained Leon and made Leon the trainer that he is today. Now, of course, in the Isle of Armor story, you have to go through the paces with your Cub Fu, but in this instance, I want Ash to use his other Pokemon, but if I'm being honest, primarily Lucario, to take on the towers. Most fans of the anime knows how Ash is. Of course, Mustard will offer him to take on one of the towers of his choosing. And knowing Ash, he wants to get the absolute strongest he can, and he'll decide to take on both towers. Alongside training, I think this is a great opportunity to introduce brand new characters like Hop, which I feel like should have been introduced a long time ago, and I'm hoping he doesn't get introduced into Pokemon Journeys this late, as we wouldn't want another How situation. But on the other side of that coin, they could also introduce the two brand new Isle of Armor characters, being Clara and Avery as they are very unique in their own way and they're training to make something of themselves. As another hope from fans, we are hoping to see Ash rotate his team and do some training in the Isle of Armor. It'd be cool to bring back Incineroar to maybe take down parts of the Darkness Tower to see where he lies in the scale of that tower. Or maybe fighting against the odds and using Infernate for the Water Tower. That would be pretty cool. By the end of the arc, Ash could battle Mustard and really show what he's made of, showing his growth throughout the entire training arc. As this would make for a unique and fun battle because Mustard actually has a full team of six and these Pokemon are pretty deadly. The Isle of Armor arc is definitely the one that I'm actually anticipating the most and I feel like it's most likely to happen very much sooner than later. But I'm curious, what do you guys think in the comments down below? Let me and Curl Blitz know what do you think could possibly happen in the Isle of Armor or Crown Tundra arcs if they get introduced into Pokemon Journeys, as we would like to know theories and your realism to the actual outcome of what the Journeys anime could produce. Also, a huge thanks to Curl Blitz for helping me out with this video. Thanks for having me, bro. Always a pleasure to help you out. All that being said, don't forget to leave a like on the video, share the video out, and hit the subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching, and bye!